Hey guys, what's going on? It's Will Patterson here again and welcome to another Illustrator CC tutorial. Today I'm actually going to be showing you how to grid and guide your logo designs to make them look even better than they do already. Now with typography, we have to be consistent with all our letter forms that we're using and this could mean that if you're doing something really artsy, you would have consistency in the smallest part. But on here, I'm showing you very much consistency on the large part. You can see I've got the word creative written here and I've got a bunch of these magenta lines. These magenta lines are actually guides and grids that we're gonna be using. You can see the paper behind this picture or what I've traced from has actually got a bunch of dots and these are grids and these to help me to space out and to keep structure. And that is exactly what these guides are for. They're just to help us create structure. You can see over here that I've got some guides and this looks a bit more overwhelming, but it's not, trust me. These guides over here are just to help me space out or have uh, some good spacing between my positive and negative space. You can see that my I is just the same as a use because I've just used these guys to keep the space. Now this is what helps me gain good positive and good negative spacing. And this is what makes the client or it easy to read for the eye because the brain has to do a lot less processing to figure out what it's saying. It goes something like that. I'm not a doctor, but there you go. So in this one, it's relatively the same, but I'm using a monoscript sort of font. I've just gone ahead and used the pen tool and traced around it. And I've got a base height, a cap height, a big height, I don't know the names of all these guides or whatever, but there you go. And I basically guided this so it's all consistent. And the guides over here on the top going down, this to help me keep the italicized angle that I'm going on. And I'm gonna show you how I did this. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer. I'm gonna hide this current layer and I'm gonna show you this picture. All I did for this picture was I brought it into Illustrator and it's just a JPEG image. It's not vector art, it's just JPEG, but it's been um, scanned in at a DPI of 800, so it's pretty decent DPI. And what I've done with this is that I've created basically just a little square image to put into my Illustrator file. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go to View, Guides, and there is no guides, so we are all good at the minute. Um, I'm actually gonna show the guides for a sec because I need to clear them all. Uh, so there we go. I'll just go ahead and get rid of this layer here. Cool. So with this, I'm gonna show you how to grid and guide it. So when you bring in an image on Illustrator, we need to lock it down. We need to make sure we don't go ahead and mess about with it. And we need to make sure that it's a bit transparent so it's not so overwhelming to look at. So I'm gonna highlight this and make sure it's on its own layer up here. Move this layer dial down here. I've named this picture by just double clicking on this layer part here and then changing the name. What I'm gonna do is highlight this and make sure it's got the bounding box on the outside. And then we're gonna to go to our transparency panel. Mine's down here at the bottom right. And if you don't see yours, go up to window and go down to transparency and make sure it's ticked. We're gonna highlight this picture and we're gonna go down here and make sure that the slide is around 40. So somewhere around 40. And you can see that it looks very light, but you can sort of see the creative hand lettering coming through. And that's what we want. So I'm gonna highlight this again and go up to my layer here, which is the picture layer. I'm gonna lock it. Now, when we lock it, we can't actually mess around with it. It's locked. So we can do things over the top of it. I've got uh, another layer up here on layer three, and I'm gonna call this vector. Now, if you're doing this, you wouldn't have the vector layer underneath. This is just to show you guys what I'm doing. So you'd have picture and then vector. This vector layer is where we're gonna be doing our guides, our grids, and our path outlines. So what we need to do now is you need to press Command and R. If I press Command and R, you can see at the top here, these rulers are coming off and on. And these are to help us either measure what we're doing or bring out guides. Now it only comes at the top and on the left hand side of your document and this is because horizontal and vertical lines will be coming out of it. There are many different ways to make guides and this is the easiest way. So the first thing we need to do is we can see in this document we've got some cap heights here. So we need to bring out down with our selection tool just a guide like so. And you can see I've just brought down a guide. How did I do that? I just went to my ruler part up here, make sure my rulers are turned on and I've dragged this down like so, and that's just created a guide. 
We need to repeat this process for all the horizontal guides by doing the same thing, which is at the bottom part here. And then we've got to create some guides for here as well. So go to the top again and bring one down here. If you screw up, just press Command Z or Control Z on a PC and just do it again. Amazing. You can also change the color of your guides by going to Command K and we can go to guides and grids and you can change the color to cyan if you wanted to or whatever. But I'm going to leave it at magenta because it's the best one for me. Awesome. So we have created that. I'm going to create another guide for up here for this cap here. And what this does, I've just ruined that, but let's do it again like so. I'm going to create another one for the T here. So I'll do it to about here. I'm going to do one for this lad here. Bring it here. Amazing. If you're finding that your caps or these guides are moving about, then go up to view, go to guides and then press lock guides. We want lock guides to be on. That is what we need so we don't mess around with them. And the next thing we need to do is somehow create some vertical lines. Now you can see here I've got some of these grids or these guides here going vertically in the drawing. We need to work out how to do that on Illustrator without using the rulers. Now we can't use the rulers because they keep horizontal and they keep straight. So what we need to do is press Command R and that'll get rid of the rulers up here and press this sort of line button here. Or go to the line segment tool over on your left. We're gonna go from the top here and we're just gonna drag down and try and match the exact angle of these letter forms here. And this is how we create our guides. We've just created a stroke. So I've, that's just a black stroke. And I don't think that's correct. So I'm gonna do it again. Just use this guy here, move him around using space and changing the angle. So it's perfectly on like so. Amazing, that is the first one. And that is like just an actual stroke. You can see up here, it's just a one point stroke. So I'm gonna press Alt Shift and I'm just gonna bring this over to here. Actually, no, I'm gonna show you an even better way of doing this. I'm gonna hold Shift and just bring this to the start of our document here. And then I'm gonna hold Alt and Shift and copy this one over here. Then I'm just gonna press Command D and it's gonna keep the same width of us doing this across there. And that'll just copy it over in the exact same spacing and you've got there. Now, that's all good, we've got those guides there. Now, how do we make them actual guides? Well, we highlight all these black things here, all these black strokes, and press Command 5 and you'll see that they're turned into guides. Now the crazy thing about Illustrator is you can turn anything into a guide. I can turn this circle into a guide. I've just brought out a circle, Command 5. I've created that into a guide. It cannot be moved. It is an actual guide. I've just pressed undo to do that. And from here, we've actually got a very pretty decently laid out document. And it makes it so much easier to create what we need to do. Such as if I wanted to create the R over here. I'm gonna go from here, up here to this guide, because I know that's where it needs to be. Down here, I'm just gonna bring this right in. And as you can see, I'm just showing you really easily how to create perfect letter forms on a monoscript line. You can see that I'm starting up with the top and then I'm moving to the bottom. And what this does, it helps me Gain consistency within my lines. Same with the V. Create the V like so, the bottom line. Appear at the top line again. We don't have to worry whether it's straight or not. And then we've got there. And it makes it so much quicker just to do these things. And it's all about preparation. So the more you prepare before using your pen tool, the better the actual experience will be when using the pen tool. Also make sure you press Command U, which will actually turn on Smart Guides, which is just here under View, and it'll make you basically snap you to these grids here, or these angles here. So no matter where you are, it'll snap you to it. It'll actually snap your angle points as well to this as well. So that's a really good idea to do. Anyway, guys, I hope this helped you. Go and create some cool logo designs and use some guides and grids. Uh, I've actually got a Behance portfolio up where you can see how I've used grids within my Fortitude Supply Company logo over here. Also, I've got a new font. You can go and get it for 10% off on my website or Creative Market. The link's in the description. So thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.